Hey everybody, welcome back to the Thinking Crypto channel. It's another bullish day in the market. I hope your portfolio looks as good as mine with a lot of green because we are hitting new all-time highs almost every day and week. Bitcoin is at $57,000. Ethereum crossed over $2,000 last night. Cardano over a dollar again. So things are looking very bullish. I want to break down quite a few things as far as this market where we're at in the market cycle in the bull run because a bull run doesn't last forever and i also have some big updates relating to xrp and the sec and a former chair speaking out so we're going to break it down before we do go ahead and hit that thumbs up button guys leave a comment below and hit the subscribe button if you're new here it helps support the channel and it doesn't cost you anything Guys, uh, right now, the price is Bitcoin back below 57000 but at $56,884, Ethereum at $1,990. So small pullback, you know, part of the market cycle is on the way up, but it's looking great here. Look at this sea of green uh, polka dot. Man, I wish I had taken a position on that, but look, those of you who are holding it, congratulations. I, of course, have Cardano, and it's over a dollar again. XRP, not doing too well. Obviously, we'll talk about that. Uh, Litecoin, I have some Litecoin. That's looking good. And Chainlink, uh, Chainlink made me a lot of money last year, and I'm looking forward to it hitting $50 and making me money again, guys. So looking great here you know bitcoin uh continues its way on its way up here um as we've been talking about if we mirror this parabolic run up we had in december into january if we mirror that once again we could top out at 65 to seventy thousand dollars. however be ready for a correction that is going to be par for the course just like we saw here nothing goes up in a straight line that doesn't mean we're not going to continue to go up uh, in the long term it just means we'll need to correct build some support levels consolidate then work our way up and of course we are going to a hundred thousand dollars and guys i tweeted this uh last night if you don't follow me on twitter please follow me link in the description if you look at this chart here right and i'm going to zoom in a little bit this 2021 bull run is already starting to make 2017 look small we look look at this and this is the bitcoin chart the weekly chart it's already starting to make 2017 look small and we still got ways to go guys and but i've said it for years even in the bear market this bull run is going to make 2017 look the same way 2017 made 2013 look if you look at the chart in the comparison between 2013 and 2017 2013 looks very small Likewise, the same situation will happen again, guys. So looking very bullish here. And you guys remember my interview with Dan Moorhead, and I know I talk about him a lot because he's a macro investor and he has put out his predictions and the respective monthly, monthly targets for Bitcoin. And so far, they have been on track. And he's predicting $115,000 by August. And uh, so far, like I said here, things have been on track and he's been right. Um, and here he updated it and tweeted out the updated version as Bitcoin hit uh, $1 trillion. And um, I think we're going to continue to go up. You know, the, the thing that you need to pay attention to is where are we in the cycles? And I love this chart here put out by Eric Wall. It is based on facts. And you, if you can see here, there's different color code uh, coded points in the market right you see these re respective rainbow colors here and it it'll start off by the blue being basically a fire sale that's when you should be buying uh the light blue which is buy green accumulate light green still cheap uh yellow hodl uh orange he feels we're in the orange phase which is is this a bubble um and then the dark orange fomo intensifies so retail fomo and then when it starts getting to the red right it says sell seriously sell and then dark red maximum bubble territory so every market goes into a bubble the only thing is the crypto market moves much faster than real estate and stocks right which also experience bubbles uh, remember the tech stock bubble of 2000 that doesn't mean there was something inherently wrong with the market or with Google or Amazon and the other tech stocks. It just meant that it was overvalued and every market gets to that point. So some people like to go around saying, oh, you see Bitcoin and crypto is a bubble. Well, every market has bubbles, dude, like, duh. But you see, they, they play these mind games and tell you these things to get you to uh, live in fear. Oh no, it's in a bubble, I better not invest. No, if you understand where we are in the market cycle, you can make money. And that is in real estate, stocks, and so forth, right? I just mentioned that the, the 2000 tech bubble, which we saw imploded 
Amazon dropped, I don't know how much percent you guys remember that. And that doesn't mean you shouldn't buy Amazon or hold Amazon because if you did, you made a ton of money, right? Likewise with Google. So uh, right now, it, we're at the, is this a bubble phase? And I think that is correct. We're not at the peak yet. We're going to hit the peak sometime this year. And I think once Bitcoin hits $100,000, that's where you have to be ready to take profits. If you are planning to, I'm not saying you should, if you are planning to. Some of us are holding long-term. I've shared my cash out plan. I'm cashing out some, not all. I'm lending on BlockFi. And by the way, um, if you guys wanna sign up for BlockFi, link in the description. Um, I'm also uh, looking at staking rewards and all of those things and holding some long-term where I'm never cashing out some, you know, leaving it for my daughter and things like that. So. That's where we're at. I hope you guys understand why I'm sharing this with you, the macro level view, because you do not want to be buying the top. You do not want to uh, have the peak pass you by and you didn't, you weren't prepared as far as what you want to do for a cash out. So I will do my best to share these type of charts with you guys. Even uh, Brad Garlinghouse, Ripple CEO, weighed in on this, you know, as far as how Bitcoin and the market has been growing. He said, amazing, with total market cap of crypto only $1 billion uh, less than 10 years ago, it was it seemed inevitable to me that we would see this day, but it's remarkable it didn't even take a decade to get here. I'm more even more optimistic for the next 10. And what is he talking about? Well, he, he retweeted here the following tweet from Morning Brew, which shows that Bitcoin, after hitting a $1 trillion market cap, it would be the sixth largest company in the world. And Apple is number one, uh, Saudi Aramco, Ar Aramco, whatever it is, at two trillion, Microsoft at 1.8 trillion, Amazon at $1.7 trillion, Alphabet, which is Google, 1.4 trillion, Bitcoin will be number six. And guess what? It's, it's gonna keep moving up the list because it's a global asset, it's on the blockchain and there's no gatekeepers. You don't have to be an accredited investor to participate in this market. All you need to have is a smartphone and internet connection and understand how the market works. So things are moving ahead. Uh, we are growing at a rapid pace as Brad highlighted here. And uh, like he said, excited for the next 10 years. So definitely wanna have a macro level view in, in as far as some of your holdings. Um, and look, you can take profits obviously, but like I said, some of it I'm not cashing out, some I'm lending to earn interest, and some I am cashing out to make, use that money to like pay off my mortgage and things like that. So just so you guys understand. Now here's the big story, guys. And I literally just a couple days ago did a video on the um, XRP situation, um, or a day ago, I should say, where the SEC updated their complaint and I said they were grasping for straws. They don't have a strong case. They waited eight years. They did it very shady where Jay Clayton ran out the door with his cronies and now uh, the pieces are left to be picked up by the new administration. And the good thing is Gary Gensler gets XRP, he gets Ripple, he gets Bitcoin. And here the SEC is dead wrong. Former chair Mary Jo White uh, defends Ripple in pivotal crypto case. So guys, you have a former chair, former chair of the SEC coming out and saying, this is stupid. What are you guys doing? Um, and in fact, I interviewed a former SEC official. You guys have seen that interview um, here. Uh, let me make sure I get his name right. Joseph Hall. And he's like, yeah, this it was not a smart move. The SEC needs to figure this out and uh, help Ripple and XRP to grow, not to kill it, right? You, yes, you if they have to pay a fine, they pay a fine. But we have to move forward, and this is really just a, a really bad look. So let me give you the details. In an interview with Fortune, White claimed the agency she once led made a blunder in suing Ripple for alleged sale of unlicensed securities. The sale in question relates to digital currency XRP, which was created by Ripple in 2013 and which today trades broadly in markets around the world. Here's a quote. There's no way to sugarcoat it. They're dead wrong legally and factually, White said. Guys, this carries a lot of weight. This is a former chair uh, chairperson who led the SEC the same way Jay Clayton did, the same way Gary Gensler is going to do when he gets in. So the fact that she's coming out here publicly, right? She's not saying this behind doors or secretly. She has got interviewed and said they're dead wrong. And that puts pressure. That puts pressure on Gensler and these other folks. And once again, Gary Gensler gets uh, crypto and I think he'll be doing the right thing here. So 
here, uh, let me continue here. Um, White's opinion should, now this is the article, should be taken with a grain of salt given her role as Ripple's attorney. Nonetheless, White's observations are worth noting given her stature. Absolutely. As one of the country's top securities lawyers and former U.S. attorney for the powerful Southern District of New York, White has firsthand insight into the politics and processes that inform decision making at agencies like the SEC, which led for nearly four years during Barack Obama's, uh, which she led, excuse me, Barack Obama's second presidential term. According to White, the fact that the SEC filed a complaint against Ripple in late December is telling. This was a time when most of the top people at the agency, including former chair Jay Clayton, were on the cusp of departing and after the SEC had spent years investigating Ripple. As I've stated in videos before, where was the SEC for the past eight years? Where were they in 2012, 2013, 2014, 2015, 2016, 2017 in the bull market? Where were they? Right? This is, whole thing is shady. Um, I think it's just... You know, this is just my personal opinion. It's not from what people have told me. And once again, I've interviewed people at the SEC. It is, I think Jay Clayton is so connected to Wall Street. If you look at his connections, this was a power play move to say, hey, we're not, we're going to stop you from growing. Look, the Wall Street guys don't like the fact that Ripple can make money from an IPO as well as a digital asset. They, they, they see the disruption, especially these banks. They know what's coming uh, with an XRP being a bridge asset. Now, this is from my own research. I'm just letting you know uh, what, what I think about it. So as a former U.S. attorney and SEC chair, you know that when it takes uh, that long to figure out a case, you probably shouldn't be bringing it. Great point. It's not something I would do walking out the door. That's why Jay Clayton, you guys saw my tweets and my statements. Um, I thought it was a, a crass, low blow, shady, sucker punch move by Jay Clayton. So while the timing of the lawsuit has raised eyebrows, the complaint itself contains damning allegations. So the article goes into that, right? But once again, uh, uh, we've gone through these things, but the fact that Mary Jo White, former chair is weighing in publicly, this is great for optics. And the pressure is going to put on the court and the judges and Gary Gensler and the, the, the current people there. And, and like I said, she she has represented um, Ripple in, in a XRP lawsuit before. So um, it's not just her. Former commissioner under Ronald Reagan um, here. Let me uh, make sure I get his name correct. I, Joseph Gun Grunfest. I always forget his name. He came out and wrote a letter to Jay Clayton saying, hey, don't do this. You're going to cause people to get hurt and lose money. So you got former SEC people coming out against Jay Clayton and what he did. And like I said, uh, I interviewed a former SEC official who, who is also like, dude, what do, what are you doing, man? This is just nuts and they need to resolve this. If you haven't seen that interview, check it out. So this is good news if you hold XRP because... Once again, the SEC is, is the genesis of all these problems. And if you have former commissioners and chairs and officials coming out and saying, yeah, what they just did, what, what Jay Clayton did is wrong, right? The optics, the pressure, the regulation. And um, if I'm not mistaken, uh, there are photos and connections of Mary Jo White and, and Gary Gensler on the web that you can see. So they know each other. And as you can imagine, I'm sure there are conversations happening behind the scenes. So... Bullish, in my opinion. I know some of you are going to be like, dude, what are you talking about, man? XRP's been not performing well. It's at 54 cents. Look at the red on your screen. What's the matter with you? I'm in this for the long run. I've done my research. I've interviewed Greg Kidd, former SEC official, Ripple's Craig DeWitt, Adam Trademan. And guess who I'm going to be interviewing very soon, guys? David Schwartz from Ripple. Um, I couldn't get the Brad Garlinghouse interview because due to the lawsuit, they don't want him talking. I'm being transparent, and uh, I'm going to talk to David Schwartz, but not about the lawsuit, about the XRP ledger and the things they're building. So if you have questions for David Schwartz, uh, Ripple CTO, let me know, and I'm, I'm in the process of scheduling that. I'm in contact with the folks at Ripple to do this, guys. So um, I'm still bullish on XRP. I know some of you don't want to hear that. You don't like it. But I'm not telling you to invest in XRP. You do what's best for you. Do your own research. But when I see things like this, this makes me bullish. This makes me bullish, guys, despite the lawsuit. So being a 100, uh, being transparent with you guys, and I do see light at the end of the tunnel here. But 
That's why I also encourage you guys from day one, diversify. That is why you diversify. You reduce the risk in your portfolio. If anything goes wrong with Bitcoin, my Ethereum holdings and Chainlink holdings and Cardano holdings will still make me money. If anything goes wrong with Ethereum, my Bitcoin holdings will, will help me to make money. Simple principles. And uh, I hope some of you listen to me over the years, right? And diversified and, or, you know, at least understand, uh, understood uh, Mark as uh, investment principles and how the big players do it. You got to diversify. You got to do your research, of course, and, and diversify. Don't put all your eggs in one basket unless you control that basket. Uh, that That's the important thing, right? So, Guys, I'm bullish. The market looks great. Um, we could see a $60,000 Bitcoin uh, possibly by tomorrow. It's it's certainly possible. Ethereum, look, we crossed over 2,000. It's going to build support levels there. We could see 2,500 um, by next week. So hodl, be patient. And like I said, pay attention to the macro level charts to understand where we're at. Because just like the previous bull runs, there's going to be a peak and then a correction into a bear market, right? Uh, and it doesn't happen overnight. It'll happen over a few months, and then all of a sudden, we'll, we won't see the the, the, the prices that were it, it, that it hit at the peak. So just keep that in mind, guys. So guys, what do you think about this news? Could Bitcoin hit uh, sixty thousand dollars by tomorrow? I think it's possible, but we'll see what happens. Uh, guys, share this video, hit the thumbs up button. Like I said, I'm interviewing David Schwartz at Ripple, so leave your questions below, and I'll talk to you all later.